Hi, I'm Eric Miller, General Contractor, Miller Integrated Design. We are here in Breckenridge, Colorado in this new Dura ICF building that we're working on. And we're gonna talk today about how to deal with electrical and plumbing and other mechanical installations in insulated concrete form buildings. No. Installing the electrical, and mainly what we're gonna be talking about is electrical wires, because there's not a lot of interaction of plumbing in insulated concrete forms. The electrical wires can easily be installed and routed through the foam. There's no more effort, no more cost, no more time. Okay, so I've heard this question a lot. Really, if you're talking about conduit, conduit is typically going to be used in commercial buildings. So in residential, we don't need to run conduit. And also, I hear that question a lot because people think, can we run the conduit through the concrete to save us time and that sort of thing? Typically, that's not what we do. If we've got to run conduit in a building, we're going to route out the foam as we've done here but in this case, we don't even need conduit. We just put the wire in here and push it back into place, okay? Then we got a box down here, okay? We're gonna just make sure the wire's pushed back so it's almost touching the concrete. And then we've attached a box right here to the, to the web. So typically not using conduit in residential. If we were, we would route this out and make it wider and then the metal conduit would attach to the concrete. And then another question that always comes up after that, well, do you have to back spray it with foam? Not necessarily. The, the wall performs so well thermally that, that putting the insulation back in place by spray foaming is not, not necessary, but we do see people do that after, after inspection. Well, glad you asked. The, the melting tool and the mini chainsaw are certainly the most popular and what we found to be the best methods of routing out the foam and creating the spaces that you need to install the, uh, typically, again, this is mainly electrical, but if we need to route out a, a space for a pipe and that sort of thing, the, the, this melting tool can do a good job and the, the mini chainsaw is very fast. What's great about the mini chainsaw is it'll make a very narrow path. It can cut through the plastic webs, which the melting tool really won't. And the, uh, the mini chainsaw is fast and creates just that narrow path where you can just stuff the Romex in there and push it back in like with a, a carpenter's pencil. Now, if you don't have these, do you need to have these on site? Well, if you're doing a large project, I, didn't, I would recommend investing in these tools. However, uh, even yesterday on this project, we didn't have this mini chainsaw and the uh, contractor was using a multi-tool and a sawzall and doing quite well with, with that method as well. So again, invest in, in the tools, but you can probably use tools that are in your toolbox already. In a typical residential project, you're probably going to see these, these plastic boxes. And we're in the kitchen looking at the plastic boxes that have been installed uh, for the countertop. So this will be where the uh, oven will be and uh, a workspace. And you know, these, are, these are the typical boxes. These are side mount boxes. And when uh, we look at the insulated concrete form, locations, let's say in the bedrooms, where we actually have exterior walls. The contractor is using the same exact box and uh, doing a side mount. And we're just routing out the foam for the box, installing the box and screwing the side mount into the plastic web instead of into the stud. And so the second part of that question really is, do we have to use metal? Is metal better? So metal is typically required. It's gonna be required in commercial construction. 
and it's more expensive. So you don't see the metal boxes in residential applications, but you will see them in commercial applications. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys how a typical outlet is going to be installed in an insulated concrete form wall. So in this case, the contractor routed out uh, two paths, for, uh, one for each wire. And uh, those wires were brought down from the uh, ceiling down in here, stuffed into this space, pushed back so that they're at least an inch and a half back, and then routed to this side mount box. This box here is screwed in to the webs. So every eight inches vertically, we have a polypropylene plastic web that's buried behind the uh, surface of the foam, five eighths of an inch. So it's very easy to attach these side mount boxes and run these wires in here. Also, what's interesting is, you notice how these are installed. The, the contractor yesterday, we didn't have that chainsaw on site. And so what they did is they taped three Sawzall blades to each other and, and basically made their own mini chainsaw approach. So today, now we have the mini chainsaw. That, that would make these probably straighter and make it look more professional. But, you know, contractors come up with great ideas on site. They have to all the time. And that's what they did yesterday. And it looks pretty darn, pretty darn good to me. Nice, neat and tight. And you know, what's really important is that wire is back away from the surface where the drywall is gonna be mounted right over this. So that, that complies with the code. Okay, there's, there's gonna be a lot of uh, different ways of actually attaching an electrical box in an insulated concrete form wall. Here you see a typical residential application where we have a side mount box. We've routed out the foam to uh, allow the box to sit back against the concrete and we attached it to the plastic web. Let's say that you needed to attach one and there wasn't a web because you needed it in this location. Okay, if we needed to put this box over here, we wouldn't be able to attach to this web. Okay, let's say we had to do that. Well, then we could use an ICF specific box that uh, there, are, there are boxes that they make that have little forks that stick out, prongs. And so you install them in the wall, you push, and these tongs stick into the foam and hold it into place. Or you could use a metal box in that case and screw it directly to the concrete. And so in a commercial application with a metal box, you're gonna route out the foam and drill through the back of the box and attach it to the concrete. Plumbing doesn't really interact with exterior walls as much as one would think. There's, plumbers are really trying to avoid exterior walls, especially with supply lines. However, sometimes you might need to route a vent through an insulated concrete form wall. And in, in this building, we're, we're really not doing that very often, but if you needed to, you can route out the foam and you can install a pipe in the wall. Now. If you had a pipe of this size, I think this is a three and a half inch pipe, th this is not going to fit in the routed out section. You would have to fur the wall out a little bit. However, if you needed to put a uh, drain pipe or waste or, or a vent pipe that was a one and a half inch pipe, uh, you can route out the foam and put it in the wall and it would be behind the drywall. So in essence, Plumbing doesn't interact with exterior walls that much. When it does, we can fit the pipes in there just like we do with the conduit or the electrical wires. We route out the foam. If we have to, we will fur out the wall and then attach the drywall to the fur out instead of directly to the face of the EPS foam. Okay, so sometimes you're gonna have to strap a pipe into place and with an insulated concrete form wall, that couldn't be easier. Because remember, every eight inches you've, vertically, you have a polypropylene strip 
that is an inch and a half wide, like a stud if you will, that you can easily install a screw into. So if you're going to have to uh, strap a pipe to a wall, it's easy. Put it into the ICF. If, if in this case, this pipe wouldn't fit in the ICF, we'd have a little bit of fur out there. And then to secure it, we would, we would pull plumber strapping across that, screw it into the web on either side of the ICF. And just like you would in typical construction, we're securing it with a commonly used material like plumber's tape. Thank you for coming to the site today. It's great to be able to talk about electrical and mechanical installations in insulated concrete forms and kind of dispel the myths around, does it cost more or is it harder? It's not, it's easy. So uh, if you have any more questions, reach out to a Nudura rep. And if you need to track us down, you just go to www.nudura.com. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. To watch the next video, click on the link here.